Hey everyone, before we start this week's video, a couple things I want to mention. Number one, you might notice that some of the scenes in this video are a little hazy. That's due to wildfires all the way on the west coast and up in Canada. Another thing is, I'm wearing a wig. As scientists and adventurers, we make observations every day everywhere we go. And we're going to start to test your observation skills. So one at one point in each video, there's going to be someone wearing this wig. If you spot it, you email us, tell us who it was and what they were doing, and we'll send you a postcard from the river. Stay tuned. This is Triple Divide Peak in Montana. Triple Divide Peak is special because rain and melting snow can flow west to the Pacific Ocean, north to the Arctic Ocean, or east to the Atlantic Ocean. And this is us. We're four friends following the water from Triple Divide Peak 3,500 miles by canoe to the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. This is the story of our rivers on the river. Welcome back to On the River. This week, wait a second, what happened to the river? It used to be narrower and we could float with the current even when we weren't paddling. But after nearly 800 miles of paddling, just past Williston, North Dakota, the river seems to have turned into a lake. What happened? I think the Missouri River has been dammed. <gasps> this used to be a river, but humans needed a way to store water, control floods, create electricity, and other things, so they built a dam. A dam is a wall built across a river which stops the flow and creates a lake. Lakes made by dams are called reservoirs. Well, that must be bad for all the plants, wildlife, and canoers that depend on the river. Well, there's lots of pros and cons to dams, and this week on the river, we're going to explore some of the positive and negative effects of dams, and we're going to keep score just like our football game. So should we start with the pros? Do you think that plants, wildlife, or humans benefit most from the dam? Humans benefit a lot from dams. I guess that makes sense. We built them. There are lots of different reasons that we build dams and different dams are built for different reasons. One reason is flood control. When it rains, dams can hold back water so that cities don't flood. Oh, I get it. So when it's raining, the reservoirs act like a holding tank so the water doesn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you understand. Another reason for dams is water storage. Darren, the Fort Peck Lake manager explained this. So we were talking about how the dams were created back in the 1930s, and that was for flood control, to help ships navigate the waters, and to provide jobs. During the Depression. During the Depression. Yeah. What, well, what are some other reasons that we make dams? Uh, um, the other benefits um, could be irrigation. We have over 140 pumps that suck water out of the lake, or the river downstream of us, to irrigate farmland. So that river right now would be dried up almost by this time of the year had the dam not been here. Oh, I get it. So the lakes that dams make provide a reserve of water for towns and farms. That's why they're called reservoirs. Exactly. Did you notice the other two benefits that Sarah mentioned? Job creation yeah. and controlling water so ships can navigate. That's yeah. two more benefits for humans. I can think of one more benefit. Hmm. Oh, electricity! Yeah. Yep, that's right. Dams create electricity through hydroelectric power. Water from the reservoir pours through turbines and creates electricity. This electricity is pollution free. So that's two benefits. One for humans, because it creates electricity. And another for wildlife, because it doesn't create harmful pollutants yeah. that lead to climate change. Renewable energy is a pro for humans too. We need clean air and water as well. Wow, that must be all the pros for dams then. Wait, wait, what's that over there? It looks like a fishing boat. Another positive effect of dams is recreation and having yeah. fun. Lots of fishing must mean that fish and wildlife benefit from dams too. Fish do love reservoirs, but not all fish. Mostly non-native species benefit from reservoirs being here. 
Native species, such as the pallid sturgeon, have a hard time surviving behind dams because they get outcompeted by non-native species. That's why the pallid sturgeon prefers the rivers over reservoirs. Do you think native fish suffer when dams are created? Well, I've been looking at the shore and I've noticed since we got on the reservoir that the plants and animals we're seeing have changed. It seems to me that native wildlife suffer when dams are created. For toads and other wildlife, dams have a lot of negative effects, including habitat loss, habitat fragmentation, predation by non-native species, loss of seasonal flooding, and changes to water temperature, clarity, and flow. Mm. So it seems that there's a lot of negatives for reservoirs in terms of native, native wildlife. I counted five negative effects of reservoirs on native species. So why do you think the dams negatively affect the wildlife more than the humans? Hmm. Probably because wildlife can't talk. I mean, think about it. A goose you can't call President Obama and ask for him not to flood her home. And a frog can't vote for a senator that's going to keep pollution out of the water. When humans change the environment, they don't usually listen to wildlife. Not all humans. Anne, a fisheries biologist, speaks for fish and talks to us about how some fish suffer because of dams. Palasturgeon's an endangered species. There's only probably less than 10 or 10 to 20 maybe left of the wild fish. We've been stocking them in here since 1997 or 98 and um, now there's hundreds of pallets about this big in here. Um, it seems like they, their demise came when Fort Peck Dam was put in and the current theory is that these are big river fish and they need a lot of drift distance for their larvae and, they're, and they get hit Fort Peck and they, those larvae just don't mature into bigger fish. And humans can suffer from dams too. One of the negative impacts of dams on humans is the loss of our wild rivers. When we build dams, we cover these rivers up and bury them forever. And even though lakes are beautiful, we'll never know about the river that was underneath it. So let's tally up the scores. It looks like there are seven positive effects of dams on humans and just one for wildlife. And one negative effect of dams on humans and five for wildlife. And while we haven't looked at all the pros and cons of reservoirs in this video, it's clear that when humans change the landscape, nearly always the humans benefit and wildlife suffers. Dams have really helped humans. But we need to remember to think about wildlife too and to make choices that will keep our planet healthy. For now, we're going to keep paddling along this reservoir and enjoying the challenge. But we can't wait to get back on the river and to have some current. See you next time when we take five on the river.